Oh, right. Hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel. And today I want to talk a little bit about this, right? I've been showing over and over and over again all year this year, pretty much, that the hash rate for Bitcoin just continues to go parabolic, right? This trend of up and to the right, as you can see, look, this is from the beginning of the year, roughly, to today. This trend has just been relentless, hasn't it? Absolutely ruthlessly up and to the right. And I've been saying all year that this is this is really good to see. This shows capital expenditure and inflows into the Bitcoin space. This shows that people want to get in and get their chunk, their slice of the pie. And of course, that pie is around 2 million coins left to be mined between now and the year 2140. But there's been this interesting speculation from Plan B that the ETF providers such as BlackRock may well be front loading the Bitcoin through the miners instead of using exchanges to spot buy their Bitcoin to avoid impacting the price significantly. So it's worth saying here that all spot buying, whether it is OTC, whether it is directly from the miners or whether it's via an exchange, impacts price somewhat, right? But it's significantly less impact on the spot price if you buy it from a Bitcoin miner or if you acquire your Bitcoin OTC than if you were to buy it for an exchange, okay? Buying for an exchange impacts the price the most. And of course, smaller exchanges with less supply of Bitcoin will be impacted more by you stripping the Bitcoin from their order books. So could this explain why the current hash rate surge this year has been observed, right? Why we've had such an aggressive uptrend in hash rate, whilst the price hasn't really experienced this same level of upside momentum, right? Price has done okay, right? Off the lows, we're around 150% up from November last year, right? So that's nothing to be sneezed at. But historically speaking, if we'd have seen an increase in hash rate like this, we would have seen the price go significantly higher than it has done. So like I said, Plan B's theory is perhaps one of the reasons we haven't seen the price go much, much higher is because these ETF providers are instead of buying their Bitcoin from exchanges, perhaps buying them via the miners. And based on the historical hash rate to USD ratio, Bitcoin really ought to be at 55 to 58K at this moment in time based on this level of hash rate increase. To build on this a little further, okay, Bitcoin's valuation based on difficulty or hash rate increased to 35K as of yesterday. And in Plan B's opinion, this could mean that apart from the possible black swan that could, of, of course, occur at any given time, right, or short-term volatility, based solely on the dollar per kilowatt hour arbitrage fundamentals, Bitcoin should never go below 35K ever again. Now, when I say this, remember, okay, remember, I, I am well aware, I am well aware that whenever somebody says, we're never going below X price again, we go below that same price within two weeks, okay? I, I'm well aware that for years I've been in this Bitcoin space and for years I have seen people say, that's it, never again below 20K, and then we go below 20K two weeks later or at least some point in the future, okay? So first of all, I'm well aware of this. Second of all, if we cast our minds back to the episodes a couple, about a week ago, perhaps, I was showing that Willy Woo had a model that suggested we would never go below 30k again. And I just said, look, don't shoot the messenger. Data is data. I'm just presenting the data. And according to Willy Woo's data, we're not going back below 30k ever again. I also said at the time, I did not expect me to be saying that. I didn't expect me to say that. I didn't expect me to think that that was even possible. But again, don't shoot the messenger. Data is data. And now, about a week later... Not only are we not going below 30k again, according to this, according to plan B, we may never go below 35k ever again. So once again, I ask you, please don't shoot the messenger, okay? Data is data, I'm just presenting it. Do I even agree with this? Not necessarily, but data is data. So this person here then goes on to say, look, can you please explain why? Price has gone below the hash rate model value in the past. Why would all of a sudden now it become the floor? Why would suddenly 35k become the floor price and we could never ever go below that again. And so plan B says, well, look, since you can buy Bitcoin directly with dollars, or as another option whereby you can use kilowatt hours indirectly, i.e. miners, there's an arbitrage model with a red line on this chart, which I'll go to in a second. Hash rate is rising fast. So what do miners know that investors don't know yet? Or are the ETF providers buying through the miners themselves? Hash rate in red continues to climb. And again, price just hasn't caught up to the hash rate. So it begs the question, doesn't it? What is it that the miners seem to know? What is it about the people that are expending capital and investing capital into the Bitcoin miners? What is it that they know that the market hasn't figured out or priced in yet? They seem to know that there's absolutely no problem with throwing money at Bitcoin miners. They seem to know that there's no problem at all with spending thousands and thousands of pounds 
on individual mining rigs and running them 24-7, keeping them cool, spending money on engineers to keep them running, spending money on replacing parts for them because of course they go bang because they never get switched off. They seem to know that all of that is well worth it. Okay, despite the price currently only being around 50% above the floor price for the average miner, the break-even price for the average miner, we're only around 50% above that, right, at the current moment in time. And yet it doesn't shy people away from throwing money at the mining space. It's as if they know for sure that in the future, Bitcoin price is going to be significantly higher than it is today. And so based on all of this, Plan B says that in his opinion, the ETF providers such as BlackRock are currently front-loading the Bitcoin through the miners instead of through exchanges. Buying Bitcoin directly on exchanges would of course impact the price too much versus buying indirectly from the miners would impact hash rate as we are seeing, but not as much on the price side. So it might explain why we've had a current hash rate explosion throughout the entirety of this year and the price hasn't quite kept up with the increase in hash rate. It's also much more difficult to trace where that Bitcoin has moved to. And more importantly, this would enable the ETF providers to accumulate virgin Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin that has never changed hands before. It has been mined and then handed over to the ETF providers, making it incredibly hard to know who's got what, okay? Now, I'm not gonna say anything more on that. I'm gonna let you ponder that for a short while. Is it in their interest to one, accumulate Bitcoin and not impact the price as much as they could do via buying from exchanges and two, is it likely that they have some level of incentivization to acquire Bitcoin in a manner that makes it hard to figure out who's holding what quantity? I think one thing that is for sure, though, is at some point, price is going to catch up the hash rate, right? At some point, either everyone that's poured all of that money into the miners, right? Either everyone that's done that is going to take massive losses on their capital investment or the price of Bitcoin is going to go up significantly and they're all going to turn out to be right. So what a time to be alive. In other news, take a look at this trading update because this blew my mind. Okay, this blew my mind how degenerate of a space this is. Bitcoin's tiny movement from just $37,400 to $36,700 completely destroyed 58,000 retail traders. That was $110 million liquidated from the poor to the rich. And what kind of leverage must these retailers be using to get liquidated for their entire account on a 2% move, okay? <laughs> Everyone must be trading Bitcoin 50x or higher. And remember, 50x leverage isn't the problem, okay? There's nothing wrong with using 50x leverage, providing you've got sufficient account size so that using that 50x leverage is only going to take out 1% to 2% of your total account if you get stopped. There's nothing wrong with using 50x leverage or even more than 50x leverage providing when you get stopped, you're not getting liquidated. But if you're using 50X leverage and a 2% move blows your entire account up, okay, then you do not know what you're doing. You're not qualified to use leverage and you probably have a gambling problem. On the flip side of this, every cloud, of course, has its silver lining. And there are some serious Bitcoin shorts above 38K. They will be taken out sooner or later. So look at the density in this heat map, okay? These are likely next up, okay? We took all of this liquidity from down here and this at some point in the not too distant future is begging to be taken just like this stuff was down here. We seem to be building out a similar structure. We've seen this before. And as you can see, one, two, three touches, pull back and go. We've had one, two, three touches, the pullback. Is it time to go? I would argue that whilst I've been calling for this run to 42K for the entirety of this cycle, right? Even before this current 60 day cycle, I've been calling for this run to 42K. I honestly think we're getting a bit near the mark now. If we don't see this next impulsive leg up to around 40 or 42K within the next week or so, then based on the 60 day cycle low that's due on the 15th, which of course right now is only about two weeks away, okay? We're slightly over two weeks away from seeing a 60 day cycle low. So if we don't get a big impulsive near vertical move up to 42K very, very pronto, then we most likely have already seen the top for this cycle. We are probably gonna do something like this into that next 60 day cycle low, and then we're gonna come swinging out of that. Now, I'll show you that when we get to the charts in a minute. The point I'm trying to make here is, hopefully this is what's coming and hopefully we do get that push to 42K. But like I said, if we don't get this pretty much soon, if we don't get this within the next few days, then I would say it's probably not going to happen for at least this 60 day cycle. And like I said, that 60 day cycle low is due around the 15th of December. I'll show you the chart in a minute. Before I do, I wanted to show you this, okay? The weekly Ichimoku cloud called our last Bitcoin rise to 38K two months in advance with a cross projected in the future. Now we wait for it to fill its next calls, the completion of our rise and the first target of 43K. This has taken anywhere from seven to 11 weeks from the cross and an average of 10 weeks, which means our move completes early 
January. At the completion of the rise, the top of the red cloud is typically targeted. The most conservative level here is 43.2K, but we could see as high as 48K. So this particular metric is telling us that we could see the 43 to 48K region by the end of the year. I have been, of course, speculating that we're going to see that much, much sooner than the end of the year. As always, I'm open to being proven wrong and time will tell. I like the look at this though. Look, this right here represents extremely low volatility and we've only seen this one, two, three, four times before in Bitcoin's history. In each one of these cases, okay, very, very good things happened to the price of Bitcoin walking forward. Is this time different? I don't think so. And on top of that, we've had this eight month sideways consolidation. This here was five months. This here was six months. This here was six months. Okay, so there's an argument to be made that we've got to go sideways for another six months before we can come blasting out of here. There's also the argument I've been making over and over again that we may well already be in that blast off phase. One thing we know for sure is we've touched extreme volatility, extremely low volatility, and there is plenty of space to the upside before we reach high volatility. History has also shown us that we can go significantly above this level as we've done here, 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 and here before. So again, it tells us to keep an open mind about higher than expected prices. And we could well see this fueled by the dollar. Okay, this is the DXY, the dollar basket. It's still in this downtrend, isn't it? We've had the bearish cross. Momentum on the RSI is down and it's down massively. And of course, since we called the top back here, we still remain target in the mid 90s. So it's a long way down for the DXY into the end of Q1 of next year before we can get that sharp reversal that we've been calling for. Of course, if we can get all the way down here, then that should set us up for a massive risk on moment for the stock market. And of course, Bitcoin should indeed be doing Bitcoin things during this time. So speaking of the dollar, here it is, right? Here's our top call. We have been continuing to expect our move down to the 95 region. Not much more to say about this, okay? I do not start to worry about this call. I, I maintain that this call is actu actually completely correct and is on pace to reach that mid 90s by the end of say March of next year, unless we break out this downward sloping red resistance line. All the while we are following this blue squiggle contained under this downward sloping red resistance line, then I expect this thing to continue to 95, okay? I'm not worried about this at all unless we start to break out of here, but I really don't see that coming. Remember, down here in March, is a three year cycle low for the DXY that we expect to see put in. So it tells us to keep an open mind about seeing this big move down here, doesn't it? I'll hop straight into Bitcoin, right? Here's Bitcoin. So as I was saying, we've got a nice, what are we on? This is day 43, right? And that 60 day cycle low, like I keep saying, is due around the 15th of December, plus or minus six days. So we're getting into that neighborhood now where we really ought to see this decline into the cycle low. So I would have liked to see this big push up much sooner than we have already. There is still a possibility that we get one more squeeze and then we roll over into that cycle low. That would be absolutely fine. That would be no way near out of the ordinary. That would be perfectly within the realm of expectation. But remember, the closer we get to this cycle low and we are only, what, how many days away if we count today as well? You know, we're only 17 days away from a perfect 60 day cycle low. So the more days that elapse here without us going up, the more likely it is that we're gonna get that rollover into that 60 day cycle low. Interestingly enough, Remember, Willy Woo is saying we never go below 30K again, okay? And Plan B thinks we never go below 35K again, which would only be somewhere in this neighborhood here, right? So where I've got that arrow pretty much might be as deep as we go in this pullback if Plan B is right. Something like this and then out of here. So I wouldn't be surprised. Nothing would surprise me at this moment. I still kind of hope that we can get a quick squeeze up, a nice big candle, and then we trap everyone and pull back into that cycle low. That would be really nice, but of course I have no control over what's gonna happen. So one day at a time, as always, I know someone's gonna ask me, what well, am I gonna sell this position if we get a pump up or whatever? No, I'm gonna push this position and then look to add a third position, right? Move the stops up and add a third position out of this cycle low as always. And as we do that, I'll be looking to do the same thing on the crypto related equities. So here's Coinbase. Hopefully this thing's gonna keep pushing up. And if it can do something like this, pull back into that cycle low and then get a swing. Like I said, we'll be adding more positions out of that cycle low for Bitcoin to Coinbase. Same is true of MicroStrategy, right? So whatever happens here, pull back into that 60 day cycle low, add another position and keep stacking them on top of each other. The exact same is true of Riot, which is broken out and hopefully gonna continue to move up before that cycle low. And Marathon as well. So long and strong continue to push, you know the deal, right? Add on the cycle low dip. We are still pushing this oil short, not much more to say about that. Gold working its way up to the top of this range. Is it going to follow my yellow squiggle? If it rolls over, then remember, down here is where we load the truck, okay? Probably exiting Bitcoin into gold down here. If, however, we get a waddle up here, something like this, and then break out, then Camel gets long above here with a stop below here. It's as simple as that. Silver, if I zoom all the way out and connect this high from 50 bucks all the way across, right? Look where we are. Let me zoom in a bit so we can see. 
right into that, aren't we? Getting ready to buy this breakout if it can go. Now, can it, can't it, I don't know. If it does, like I've been saying over and over again, we'll respect the long, we'll put a long on here, and I should think $30 comes pretty quick, then some congestion, and then a move to $50 shortly thereafter. Is that what's coming, or is gold and silver gonna roll over one last time before we go? I don't know, as always, one day at a time, but if this breaks out, then we will be respecting that. So expect me to add a long today if this thing is gonna break out. I also like the idea of adding the silver miners if they can break out of here, so we'll see. We'll see if that can happen or not. Not super confident about this at the moment. The miners have still got a lot of work to do, right? The There's the uh, senior miners and the junior miners, but it's clearly getting closer to the time to add these miners, I think. It's not something I've been paying attention to, and that's because we've been trending down for this whole time. But if we can make these final repairs, then it will be time to add these positions back. So I've been giving you plenty of warning, right? There's still a bit of work to do, as you can see, but I don't think we're too far away. For me though, the thing I'm worried about or concerned about is that we may well get a rejection and one final rollover whilst the stock market completes its move to all time highs. One day at a time as always, like I said, break out of here and we will be adding the longs. So expect me to do that in the next couple of days if we can get some breakouts. And the stock market move off the lows has been really strong. It looks like we're entering this pullback phase now. So I see a lot of people talking about filling all of these gaps back down to here. I'm not convinced we're gonna fill all of them to be honest, I wouldn't rule it out. But for me, I would probably be more expecting to see something more like this in the worst case, followed by resumption of the upside. As always, one day at a time, and we'll see what the market can give. It's the same deal for the NASDAQ, right? There's a bunch of gaps all the way down here, and I see people calling for this. Maybe, right? But I wouldn't be surprised at all if it's only as shallow as this, and then we resume to the upside. Dow Jones is about a third of the way, isn't it, to its measured move target at 38 1200 which of course would be a new all-time high similarly i wouldn't be surprised to see some level of pullback and a reversal but at the same time i'm not convinced these gaps all the way down here are getting filled to be honest with you gotta love the russell 2k following my squiggle so so far so good happy days long and strong continue to push and the vix as well right i was talking about getting some kind of counter trend bounce before a rollover seems to be what's at play for now so one day at a time as always but Happy days, happy days, happy days. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think about the whole ETF thing with the miners. Let me know what you think about that. I'd be interested to get your opinion. And in the meantime, I hope you're doing well in life. Take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.